tell me something, three things, what are they? <laughs> the, the three special magic. Let's not forget you've upgraded China today as well, yeah. Uh, this is true, yeah. So, so the upgrade of China is in the context of thinking about the, the regional context here. And I think we're at a juncture, having had a very good start to the year with a bit of pullback, as you mentioned, where there are three key issues that we think are likely to be determining equity market performance over the next uh, few quarters. Uh, the first and the most positive is that the reflation dynamic is very much in play. And the area that we would highlight here is the improvement in nominal GDP growth. Most people think in terms of real GDP growth, but the increase in inflation and the better operating environment is actually flowing through to corporate earnings and also to market performance. So to give you just one number, uh, China, we have a 270 basis point increase in nominal GDP growth this year, even though we're expecting a very mild deceleration in real GDP growth. So that increase in inflation, which is most specifically denominated by PPI, which is minus nearly 6% at the beginning of 2016, and it's plus nearly 8%. Percent now is a very significant shift. But how useful in is nominal dynamic. GDP? We've seen Japan have really good nominal GDP uh, figures in the past. Well, I mean, uh, I, I would. I mean, Japan's nominal GDP, GDP no, growth figures. Yeah, but they're in, they're in the order the, on the range of one to two percent, right? I mean, China, China, we're numbers. talking about eleven percent, ten point eight percent, or, or uh, to be to be precise. So, the, uh, basically, the point we're making is that, is that the change in, in nominal GDP growth we think flows through to corporate earnings growth. It also takes NPL stress off the banks because the areas that had bad cash flow in the upstream part of the economy are now doing better. So we've upgraded our view on China banks today as well. So that, that's basically the first factor. The second, which is a little bit more of the in, in the in-between category, is the idea that, that global growth momentum is probably peaking right now and in the next, say, couple of months is probably going to start to decelerate. So the idea is that growth is good, but we're probably past the sweet spot or at the, sweet, at the apogee of the sweet spot right now in terms of the momentum of growth. Um, and the third aspect, of course, is the risks which have been latent in the first part of the year, which are not coming more fully into, into, into uh, focus, the most topical being the Fed likely to raise interest rates this week, as well as the stronger dollar, trade issues, and so forth. So if we put these things together, our view is that we want to go for the parts of the region that have more specific drivers to them, and we think that's China, because China has the, some, the best nominal GDP growth, as I just mentioned. We also have the idea that we've got this so-called policy put into the 19th Party Congress at the end of the year. We also have the China-specific southbound flows coming into Hong Kong, which whatever you think the flows will be for the, for the rest of the region are a unique and positive specific aspect to China. And global investors are underway China at decade record wide. Underweight. Uh, underweight, excuse me, underweight of 300 basis points for $1.2 trillion of mutual funds that we cover. So if you put all this together, we think that the China specific arguments for at least outperformance on a relative basis are pretty good right now. Okay. And, uh, you know, you mentioned southbound. Why this huge discrepancy still between H and A shares? Uh, you know, good question. Uh, I, th I think there is some money coming in southbound for a number of reasons, partly because of this valuation disparity, as you've mentioned. Uh, partly, there's a st pretty strong correlation between the uh, renminbi U.S. dollar exchange rate and southbound flows coming in. And also, there just are, maybe it's the same point, but they're just better valuations and opportunities. There's some stocks in Hong Kong that give you good exposure to China that are not listed in the A shares. And so we think the combination of these three factors is driving the secular improvement in growth into, uh, into the Hong Kong stock market. Uh, Tim, you mentioned, I want to pick up on the point, you're saying that you've upgraded Chinese banks. Uh, you've got to be selective, right, though, because we heard at the MPC last week officials admitting there are some lenders in China where they've got more assets off balance sheet than on balance sheet right now. No, I th Heidi, I think that's, that's very true. And if you look at the report, just quite a detailed one that we put out today, it, um, it, it, we're very much favoring the larger banks because we think that those are the ones that have the better asset quality and the better overall growth and valuation intersection. So we would certainly be much more in favor of the larger banks than the smaller ones, which have some of the asset, the greater asset quality issues that you just mentioned. Yeah, and Tim, I, I want to pick up what you said before about this potentially being the peak when it comes to the, the global recovery, the global growth story. I mean, why is nobody questioning or should we start questioning this global reflation trade? Because they're seeing commodities get picked off one by one. Input prices are falling. You know, case in point, that massive sell-off in oil we had last week. Is it time to start rethinking about whether this reflation story has legs? Uh, a great question, and I think, and this is the message that we had in our piece, that we think we're, we're moving into a what we call a more mature phase 
of the of the reflation trade. So if you look at the internals of the market, if you, as you have correctly articulated, the previous leaders during the fourth quarter, when it was all about the very much the sort of the Trump uh, reflation trade, were energies, commodities, and some of the banks. Uh, now we're seeing maybe the edge come off the commodity and energy side, and we think that banks will be one of the areas that continues to lead, particularly in Asia.